Hi there, welcome to Goods In from TD Cat Tech. Today I'm looking at uh, this Nightcore SC4. And do you know what SC4 stands for? Do you know what the SC stands for? Well, it's written right there. Superb charger. Well, that must be good if it says on the front of the box that it's a superb charger. Before I start this video, I just want to say that this product was not supplied to me by Nightcore. Uh, I bought this myself and uh, all opinions are my own. In fact, that's true for all my videos. Even if I am supplied a product, I will always go back to the company and say, I have full creative content control over this video. I'm not going to, I'm going to say what's good and what's bad. And if you're not happy with that, don't send me the product in the first place. So uh, you can guarantee that if you're seeing a review on this channel, it will be my opinion. And that might be right, it might be wrong, it might be good or bad, it might it's just my opinion, it's my review. So it's not the review of a salesperson. Anyway, on with a look at the Nightcore charger. At this time of year, is a, well, this time of year being December, uh, is a time of year where we have all sorts of little LED lights around the house and you're just making it feel nice and cosy and stuff. But the only problem is they're all battery operated. So I end up with a ton of uh, AA batteries that need recharging all the time. And I have two chargers currently, but one of them is one is, is a charger that I really don't like, and it's this one. Now, this one does have some sort of okay features. It has a pre-charge feature, which I think dumps a ton of current into the uh, battery when it first starts charging, which is supposed to be a good thing for nickel metal hydride batteries. But the one thing I don't like about this is, well, no, sorry, there's two things I don't like about this. Firstly, it, the batteries get incredibly hot, uh, which to me suggests it's possibly overcharging or, uh, they, I mean, they are really hot. I, uh, everything I've read about nickel metal hydride batteries means uh, states that you shouldn't really be getting high temperatures. They should, they should be warm to the touch, but not hot almost to the point of where you can't touch them, which is what this does. Also, this is mega fussy about batteries that are low voltage. So what tends to happen, I find, is when you have kind of LED LED lights and you have three uh, batteries in there, one of them seems to get discharged much more than the rest. I don't know if it's related to the one that's already in worse condition or something, but one of them tends to get discharged more and goes drops down to a really low voltage. And this will just kick it out and just flash and just say, error. That's no good. That's not what I want. So I got a replacement charger for that a while ago, which is this one, the MyBox. I did an unboxing of this, and this works fine. It, it will charge anything. Sometimes it takes a bit, bit long to charge. Uh, compared to batteries of today's capacity, you know, which are 2,500 milliamp hours, uh, this can only do one amp per battery. So what have I got? Well, I've got the Nightcore. I've got the Nightcore charger now, which is essentially, by the look of things, the same as this, really. It's, it's largely the same. It's got a slightly nicer display on it, a nice sort of LCD, um, clear, sort of sh very sharp display. And it supports more current. So each slot can support up to two amps, I think. Uh, so lithium ion batteries can be done at three amps in one slot. Uh, but it, I think it has, a, does it have a maximum of six amps, this? Let's just have a look down the side of the specs. Uh, oh gosh, look at look at all those features on the back. Feel free to pause that and have a look down those features. A ton, ton of stuff. These are all the, all the ones that it can charge. And um, anyway, so all you get in the box is the charger and a C7 cable, of which... Uh, it came with a Euro variant, so no use to me at all. And it does come up with it come with an instruction manual. I've already opened this, so I'm going to just bring that into shot now and show it you because I've already charged some batteries here in this. And uh, this is the Nightcore charger. It's 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 pretty nice. Bit more, bit heavier than the uh, the Mi Boxer or My Boxer or whatever it's called. Uh, but I'll just zoom in on the specs here, and you can take a look at what this supports and what it doesn't support. So you've got a USB out on it as well, which is a 2.1 um, amp USB port at five volts. And then you've got a three amp times two maximum or 1.5 amp times four maximum. So this can do 1.5 amp charging current um, times four. But if, you, if you're only using a couple of slots, you can charge your nickel metal hydride batteries at two amps if you wish. Now nickel metal hydride batteries I have read are or can accept a charge current 
of up to 1C, so that means 1 times their capacity. And uh, in the case of these inner loops, that would make it about 2.5 amps. But I don't think I would charge these at 2.5 amps. Still, that's the theory. It does seem that it's actually quite tricky to charge a uh, nickel metal hydride battery. Uh, there are really basic ways of doing it, so just time-based charging. So if you were to kind of effectively trickle charge a battery and just do it for a long period of time and then stop it, it would probably be fine. It wouldn't overcharge it if, if, it, if the current was low enough, and that's the most basic method. Then you've got voltage as well. This one will happily look at the voltage. It will report the voltage back to you and say the voltage of these batteries. These are all fully charged, by the way, at the moment. I do have some empty ones, which I'll put in in a second just to show you how that all goes. Uh, but this is full at 1.46 volts, and uh, you can just measure the voltage of the battery. So it gets to a certain point and the charge cuts off. The other thing you can look at, the third thing you can look at with nickel metal, metal hydride batteries is temperature. So the temperature of the battery will change in a certain way as it reaches full charge. And the final thing is a negative uh, delta voltage. I think I'm pronounce and think I think that's what it's called. Uh, so effectively, when a nickel metal hydride battery, or a NICAD in fact, charges, and when it be when it reaches its full charge, it kind of goes up in voltage, and then it just has a little dip at the end when it uh, is fully charged. And a, a smart charger, supposedly such as this, should be able to detect that small change in voltage and assume, therefore, that the battery is fully charged. It's much more difficult, however, with metal hydride batteries compared to NICADs because that dip is much smaller. So the charger is having to detect a very, very small change in voltage. And that small change in voltage could be caused by other things, just general kind of bad battery or interference or I don't know, all sorts of things. So that is harder to do with nickel metal hydride batteries. And that is one of the reasons why they say do charge a nickel metal hydride battery at a reasonable current if you can. Because as you increase the charge current, it also increases that delta between the final voltage and then the little dip that happens afterwards. So it's a bigger change in voltage that occurs when you've charged it at a higher current. If you only kind of trickle charge a metal hydride battery, that change will be so small that the charger will never detect it and it will just carry on charging. Now this does have all sort of overheat protection and all that sort of stuff, you know, it'll time out after 10 hours, it'll uh, detect temperature over temperature, um, you know, wrong polarity, all that sort of thing. But it does use negative voltage a uh, negative delta voltage or voltage delta or whatever uh, to uh, d determine the charge status of the battery. Anyway, there we go. So let's just flick through these channels and see what we're at, where we're at with each of them. So we've got that's channel one. I'm not that bit fond of this display. It's not terribly clear, is it? We're, yeah, I mean, anyways, there we go. So channel one is one point, so one point four six volts, one point five two, one point five two. So th so we got two at one point five two, one at one point four six. So it says it's full, but let's just flick through the other information on here. So it managed to put in 1,157 milliamp hours. The, it says it's poor, and that's not surprising, because look, at the internal resistance of the battery is 500 mega ohms, which is terrible. And, and it took 1 hour 17. So it suggests that this middle battery, uh, this battery here, is not in great condition. Whereas the rest of them, if we go to channel 3, for example, it's got 1.52 volts. It put 2,096 milliamp hours into it over 4 hours 19. Good status and only 119 mega ohms of internal resistance. So you can get some good information from this charger. Nothing more than any standard smart, you know, um, nickel metal hydride charger. But of course, this does all the other batteries as well. And uh, it can recover lithium ion zero volt batteries. And it can, it does all, all the sort of standard stuff that these smart chargers do. Something I've seen online about this charger is uh, questions around coil wine. Does it make a noise when you're charging or when it's plugged in? And although I haven't heard a massive amount of noise from it, the answer is yes, it does. It does have that familiar, is it a co I'll, I'll call it coil wine. I'm not absolutely sure if that's the cause of it in this case. It probably is. But um, it yeah, it has that familiar sound when it's doing certain things, like when it's charging, or particularly when it's not charging, when it's just left idle, it will 
have that noise. It's only really quiet. So, you know, unless you're after a totally silent charger, if you are after a totally silent charger, this probably isn't the one for you. But uh, to answer that question that a few people have said and, and put online, yes, it does have a slight noise when it's in use. All right, so they are all fully charged. I realize it's hard to see. You've got my lights there shining on the display. They're all fully charged. Uh, so let's just pop those out. And I've got some others that I've just taken out of some LED lights in the uh, living room. They were becoming rather dim. So I'm assuming these are just Amazon basics. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they are also pretty low. Uh, so let's see where we're at with these. So this 1.17 volts. And it doesn't really give any... Uh, the good thing about this this one is it immediately gives a percentage. And I like that. I mean, I don't care how accurate it is, really, uh, as long as it's accurate to itself. It doesn't give any kind of percentage on here, does it? It just... Okay, so let's just put them all in. Uh, the fit is a bit better in this than the other one. The fit of... Because these have to hold 18650s, sometimes the fit on double A's can be a little bit... Mm, yeah, there is a... There is... It's fairly, fairly, um, fairly well aligned in there. A little bit better. These sort of on in this one, they sort of wobble around a bit because the slots are so big because they have to fit the bigger batteries. Going back into the display, uh, let's go to channel one first of all, and we'll see what information we've got. So we have so so far we've got six milliamp hours being put into it. Charge time of one minute. Of course, channel is good, and its internal resistance is 117, so that's decent. Uh, we've got the same on this. And you can see the charge, oh, that's the charge cu current, charge current, the charge current at the moment. <laughs> and internal resistance 162, that's all right too, and then 203. So the standard charge current, the default charge current, should I say, is 500 um, milliamps, which is okay. It's not too bad, but with these being higher capacity batteries, I'm going to bump this up and I'm going to try this at two amps because you can do it. Um, no, I'm going to try it. I'll do, I'll do an amp and a half, one at 1.5 amps because I can do that across all three. So the, the way I do that is just by holding down this button here and that starts flashing the charge current and then I can just bump this up like this. I'm just going to bump this up to 1.5 and then I can change to the next next one like that and I can bump that up as well. And do that with the next one as well. And then press and hold, I think. And that goes out. And, and initially, you look and it says, oh, look, it's still at 500. And it does take a couple of seconds to ramp up. So if this com comes around again, I've got a feeling it will have bumped up the charge current. There we go. So we're now at 1.5 amps charge current. And I can imagine that as a result, we'll start to see much more power getting dumped into these. Uh, if I have a look at the second one now, does that show the same? Yep, there we go, 1499, close enough, 1 1.5 amps of charge current. Just to say that the three batteries I was charging there worked out absolutely fine. They all charged in about three to four hours and uh, they managed to put managed to put just over 2300 milliamp hours into those which i thought was pretty reasonable because um i don't have the capacity uh, in my head at the moment but it's certainly not much higher than that so to get that much power into them seems to be perfectly fine uh, so overall i mean i find this to be decent i like it it's, it's quite expensive i suppose i think it costs like 50 pound or something but it's in line with any sort of reasonable charger I, I don't doubt for a second that when you go online and you type kind of smart nickel metal hydride charger you get a lot of stuff that looks a lot like this and you sort of think is there really any difference between them At the end of the day you've just got to choose one and the only way you can choose one is based it on what other people say so you know my recommendation based on what I've used so far of this is it works fine. It has all the functionality that I need. The display is nice and clear, apart from the slot selection. But, you know, it's a nice nice display that they've used on it. It's built pretty nicely as well. It's nice, uh, nice sturdy design and good sort of weight behind it. I assume the extra weight in this is because of the uh, extra power that this is um, capable of delivering. So six amps in total, 1.5 amps across four nickel metal hydride cells or up to three amps per cell if you're using something like 18650s. And uh, it seems like a reasonably, reasonably good charger. So yeah, probably plenty of others out there that are do the same kind of thing. 
but the Nightcore seems like an okay one to go with. There we go. A just a quick look. Oh look, that stays up by itself. <laughs> it's magic. Uh, the Nightcore SC4. I'll put links to this in the video description. If you're interested in taking a look at this and you'd like to support the channel, please click on those links. And uh, there are genius links. And what 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 that is is it's an affiliate link for Amazon, and it redirects you to your uh, Amazon store in your local country. If they don't sell this product in your country, it'll just do a search on sort of Nightcore stuff, and you might find some other stuff. But uh, if you want to support the channel, please use those links. And any questions you have on this product, do let me know. Thank you very much for watching, and um, happy charging. Yeah.